Hello to all. Here today with a bit of a continuation onto our French Premium series in the Tier 9 Premium French Battleship. That is the Jambar. We're here today on the map Land of Fire and the mode is Domination. We're in a double carrier game, but we're in the Jambar, so, well, this could spell disaster for many. This is, relatively speaking, only largely inconveniencing rather than crippling. Spawning above sea cap with a very small group of ships. Double carrier game, remember, as I mentioned, so we're gonna have to be careful. Shokaku, Kaga versus Shokaku Implacable, I would say we're slightly favored, but not hugely favored. And then there's still player quality to consider. So we're in 7 to 9 matchmaking, so we are fortunate enough to be top tier in this tier 9 French premium, available for coal or for cash. Uh, I honestly went for the coal option, not really about spending, what is it, 80 USD for a pixel ship, when you can acquire it for free for just being patient, but that's neither here nor there. Now, the Jean Bar. This is the Richelieu's younger sister. So Richelieu appears in the French tech tree as the tier 8 tech tree ship, or silver ship, in her as-built configuration. And the Jean Bar appears at tier 9 in her 1955 post-war AA refit. You can probably see where I'm going here since we have chosen to cast a double carrier game. We have modernized AA on this 1950s battleship, so you have a metric ton of anti-aircraft armaments. There's the 155mm dual purpose secondary, 100mm dual purpose secondaries. So her AA is substantial the range is mediocre still just 5.8 kilometer range but the damage is quite good especially for a battleship now moving up onto the cap i'm gonna bring my all guns forward armament to bear looks like this fdg is making a turn looks like he also has a horrific camouflage and he does commit to the turn now open up with my twin quadruple 380 millimeter turrets as i pop my reload booster so as the premium sister, as I underlead the J, uh, underlead the FDG, the JB differs from her sister in that she has access to this main battery reload booster consumable instead of having a spotter plane. And what this does is it basically halves your reload while it's active. So for every second that the reload booster is running, instead of ticking down one second of reload, you tick down two seconds, which allows you to squeeze off essentially three salvos in the time of two. Sadly for me, I did whiff my first salvo, and then my follow-up salvos were only middling. But it is what it is. No. So, the Jean Bar does not have any difference in her guns compared, as I try to get that pot shot onto the Cossack. No dice there. Gonna take a shot onto the Colorado. Remember, he's tier 7, so I overmatch his 30... or 25mm plating, sorry. Two DDs in front of us, so gonna have to play with a little bit of caution. So 380s, relatively small caliber for tier 9, and having only 8 rifles is also a relatively low barrel count for tier 9. This is of course partially compensated for by both her 1.9 Sigma, an improvement over the Richelieu's 1.8, and her main battery reload booster, which gives her some surprising burst in spite of her low raw DPM numbers. Atlanta pops up, gonna take a shot, and we do score a double citadel, nearly wipe him off the map. Hopefully our Shokaku can not hit the rock and... Okay, I'm gonna try for those overpens. It's a blind shot, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Really want to finish off that kill. Let's see if I can get my teammates to do it for me. One of my teammates does kill an Akazuki on the other side of the map for first blood. Slowly reversing here, now I'm a tier 9 battleship, which means I have 32mm plate. I'm a tier 9 French battleship, which means I have 32mm plate all over. No special armor or anything, as I use my speed boost to help me speed up. Looks like he's turning, gonna pop my reload booster. Now the optimal time 
to use reload boosters right after you've fired a shot. That way you get your perfect uh, three salvos in two salvos timing. But you can just pop it midway through a reload cycle just to increase your rate of reload if you have an opportunity in front of you. My dispersion, which is still the French or German pattern depending on how you want to call it, which is a bit wonky, means that I don't quite get the perfect punish I'm looking for. He's not perfectly broadside and the Colorado is a bit short. You'll notice my shells are spreading out in a rather um, wide ellipses pattern. But the whole point is that the reload booster allows you to on demand pop in increase and burst damage. As I mentioned previously, I have 380s. Fortunately for me, I am top tier in this match, so when I shoot a tier 7 like the Colorado, my shells overmatch most of his external plating. Looks like there's a broadside. It's the FDG. Yeah, the FDG in the middle is still broadside. I do want the Amalfi instead, though, if he does pop. But no such luck. I'm going to continue to ram my AP shells into him. Now, the AP shell is a just shy of 12,000 damage AP shell, so. The damage matches to caliber, unfortunately. My shells go stray of the astray of the FDG. The HE shell is French HE, so pretty mediocre 5400 alpha. Uh, compared to the wrist shell, yeah, you not only have access to slot 6 because you're a tier 9, as I shoot the Iowa on the horizon, he's a bit flatter, but you also have a slightly shorter stock reload of just about 26 seconds, similar to the Bismarck. So you end up having a much, much shorter reload than the Rochelle herself. Cossack popping on the horizon, gonna keep my bow pointed toward the FDG, 32mm plate. Means I bounce everything except Yamato leading with AP, switching to high explosive. He's slowing down, however, which I failed to anticipate as I slide into the cap for some cheeky assisted capture points. Those torpedoes are out of range for me. They are, however, for the knives now. So my reload's in 8 seconds, my reload booster is in 2. I am going to pop it on cooldown just to improve my reload. Spraying both sides of the Cossack here. Not quite sure how he's going to turn yet. If he goes straight, then it's going to be a problem for me. Remember that wide sideways elliptical pattern of my shells. Now he turns. That's what I want. Unfortunately, I underlead. And we only end up scoring one hit with our reload booster, but one hit is better than no hits. Reload boost, or sorry, speed boost is back up. Gonna expend my high explosive. I guess onto the FDG. I was gonna spend on the Amalfi, but I can't. Gonna prep my armor piercing. I'm gonna advance forward with my all guns forward setup. Set of fire, but my shells shatter on the uh, FDG's armor. Now because of this all forward setup, you are extremely aggressive if you want to be, as long as you're not sustaining high explosive fire. As I mentioned, you are a French cruiser, or a French battleship, and French battleships have relatively thin plating of 32 all over. 32 is exceptionally vulnerable to high explosive fire, especially sustained fire like this. Aiming for midsection here, taking my time, take a 7000 SAP chunk. I did turn for the Amalfi as I chunked the broadside FDG, but he popped his fuel smoke, or his creeping smoke if you prefer. This guy's running his hydro, but that doesn't matter to me, it's not like I have torpedoes, and it's not like he doesn't see me pounding him. Again, aiming forward. 12,000 this time, a little more disappointing, only 6 out of 8 shells. He sets a fire with his secondaries. My secondaries are good, but they're on the rear of the ship, so when you charge in like this, you do lose access to them. His turtle back is preventing me from citadeling him. I'm holding onto my damage control for situations like this double fire, or situations where he breaks the gun. The JB having all guns forward, only three shells. My shells go into the water, should aim a little higher. The JB having only two guns forward and flat French turret faces means that uh, she, unfortunately, he has target acquisition, Jesus means that she unfortunately is very vulnerable to losing turrets. Oh, okay. This is gonna be a problem. Popping my reload booster. Tracking his ship. He unfortunately will splatter me. Hope my secondaries can get him. Not quite. <laughs> 
Not quite. <laughs> but, I'm somewhat confident my team can clean this up. So you saw there we got into a bit of a scrap. But Reload Booster coming in clutch to at least help us score some kills. There's two low HP ships here now. The Cossack gets finished off by FDG secondaries. His secondary is doing the job that my relatively middling secondaries cannot. Now I probably could have finished the FDG and if I, that third salvo I fired into him where I only hit him with three shells was a little better, I think I would have just straight up just killed him. But it is what it is. You can see up close the German dispersion scheme that the French battleships carry can still be a bit trolly as my team does wrap up the FDG kill. So remember the John Bar is a French battleship and you can and even beyond being a French battleship she is a battleship and sometimes you can just never trust battleship dispersion. Now the game was about to tick out but my team does loot the destroyer so I'm gonna have some extra time to see this Zara duel this Amalfi. Tier 7 versus tier 8 Probably an unfavorable match considering the HP differential, tier differential aside. You can see one of them is angled, and one of them wasn't angled. However, a kill does finish off the game. Very tame game, you're top tier. And in spite of my talking about the uh, AA refit, we were unable to make use of our AA very much. Just shot down some spotter planes. But a very conservative 110,000 damage, over, 50, over 59 shell hits. For two planes shot down, four in caps, two fires, two sits, one assisted capture, 50 secondary hits, which didn't do particularly much. And it's a bit of a weekend game, second from the top at only 1500. Damage score wise, a lot of our damage onto the tier 7s, there's the Atlanta Beach, we're just shy of devastating. A little bit unlucky of the dispersion. But as you saw there, the Jean Bart is extremely punishing with its all forward setup, just shoving those relatively low caliber shells into the enemy with sudden bursts of damage using that main battery reload booster. Now she does have that speed boost I mentioned, it's a standard French battleship speed boost, nothing particularly special about it. So if you've seen the tier 10 Super Alsace, the Burgon, the steel ship, she has a cruiser speed boost. So the cruiser speed boost gives 15% enhanced maneuverability which brings the Burgon from 32-ish knots up to 39, 38.8, just shy of 40. Uh, the Jean Bar is not quite so lucky, she has the Battleship Speed Boost, uh, also known as the Destroyer Speed Boost, which gives only an 8% improvement as we load up into this match. So she goes uh, not quite nearly as fast, just about 33, 34 knots with the Speed Boost activated, but the main key point of Speed boost is not the actual enhancement to speed, especially for a battleship, uh, since it's only the 8%, but the enhancement to your, the responsiveness of your of your engine. So speed boost is the only factor in this game outside of base stats of the ship that affects both your acceleration and, dis more importantly, deceleration. So for many ships that take propulsion module, the one that gives 50% enhanced engine time, it helps you accelerate extremely quickly, and even a module such as the Des Moines Legendary module, which allows you to accelerate extremely quickly, uh, only really helps you in that forward motion. Now the Des Moines Legendary module has some special properties which I think allow you to go something like 13 knots in reverse. But that aside, the only other uh, mitigating factor which can affect your deceleration speed and help you stop in time to dodge torpedoes, for example, is a speed boost. So this gives the French uh, battleships excellent response time to start-stop kind of ship control when this boost is active. Heal is standard, damage control is standard, and as I mentioned before, French battleships, so she's covered in 32mm plate, so you crisp. So in this tier 10 game, for example, if I was shot at by this Charles Martel with his 203s, he just pens me all over, there's no middle deck plating that's 38mm or 50mm that shatters that kind of HG on my ship at all. I'm just coated in thin 32mm plate that does the job of bouncing battleship AP if you angle properly, but does tend to eat a lot of high explosive fire. 
You'll note that unlike the Rochelle Yu, I have a very impressive range of 24.5. Now at range, my performance is unimpressive, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't take these shots, especially when there's nothing else to take. The shells themselves, the dispersion pattern we've gone over in length, at depth, or sorry, at length, but not particularly in depth. As Kitakazi pops up, have my ammunition still loading, so I'm gonna maintain my armor piercing for now. See if I can get another look at him. Looks like he was slowing down. Switching to high explosive because there's a Fletcher on screen as well, although he's gonna pass behind that mountain. I'm gonna use my speed boost to quickly decelerate, beach myself, and start reversing. I'm hoping someone else will put the Kitagazi up for me, however, it's just a Fletcher. So it's going to have to be the carrier. Maybe the carrier spots to Fletcher as well. So I'm looking at this junction. So French dispersion, 1.9 Sigma, which is better than most of the tech tree battleships and better than German battleships, but is only a marginal improvement. The French 380mm shell itself, or 380mm rifle if you prefer, is actually a fairly high velocity rifle. But at range, because of its relatively low caliber, it does tend to lose quite a bit of penetration. Kitakazi comes up. Mm, my carrier's hovering, so worth a reload boost. Three hits. Yeah, I got a fire onto the Kitakazi, so that's where I'm going to shoot. He's not as good of a target as the Fletcher, but I want to try and relight that fire for some permanent damage. You can see me here getting an almost perfect reload booster. Almost able to squeeze out that last salvo while it's running. Uh, if they were still lit, I would be able to shoot them. Modernized AA coming into play here. One plane, two planes... Oh, still one plane, I'm lying. So I know the Fletcher more than likely is in the cap. I'm gonna turn away. That's the Kitakaze. Now remember, the Kitakaze is a Akazuki-class destroyer, which in this game has up to 33mm of penetration if you take IFHE. And everyone takes IFHE because everyone wants to be able to farm nasty battleships as I trim what's left of that squadron. Seven planes shot down my modernized AA. I shot at the GK because I can't see anything. Ugh. Okay, so Lexington is going to put up the two destroyers, but I slid into cover as I was trying to dodge the torpedoes, so I'm going to miss out on my chance to get a shot. So sadly, as the Lexington HEDB puts up those destroyers, I'm not going to be able to shoot them that well. Looks like that Fletcher's cresting the corner. Ah, oh, I'm just really sad that I can't help with the Kitakaze, but it is what it is. You got a position for yourself, you can't necessarily rely on your teammates. If my allied Lexington had gone somewhere else, then I would have just been looking there for no reason. I would like to shoot that GK, but no such luck. The two destroyers are coming back into the cap, so I'm going to come back into the cap as well. This guy's launching APDBs. Well, I am theoretically citadelable by both the Shokaku and the Hakuryu, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So they go down, and plane spotted. The planes are just being used to spot out my allies. Now I'm spotted, remember, but now because of my all guns forward setup, I can at least nose into the incoming Kitakazi torps. My reload booster is about to pop up. And this guy's proximity spotted by him dueling, so I'm gonna pop my reload booster. I'm gonna charge towards the Fletcher for a couple seconds longer. Maintain HE loaded. I dodge the Fletcher torps because of that. 4k into the Fletcher now. Secondaries open up. Turn my guns for the Kitakazi's anticipated position. Let's trim some planes. Kitakazi pops up, all guns forward, so I never have to adjust as long as I'm charging into battle. Two fires, it's gonna prompt an immediate damage control. I don't have target acquisition, so it's just Gunbloom that's spotting him out for me. If he has torpedoes, he's going to try and broadside. Looks like he's... Okay, I need a hard turn now. I wish I had speed boost for this. My guns are going to load, but it's unclear as to where I should be aiming. I'm going to try and depress my turret sufficiently. Didn't quite clip him enough, but I'm too close for torpedoes at this range. Hopefully my secondaries can finish him off at this point. I'm going to switch to armor piercing because I can't do anything about him now at this point. The game is in his ballpark. Iowa does help me finish him off, but you can see that for most of my heavy caliber secondaries, 
the gun arcs are restricted backwards, which is why this is more of a main gun focused ship than a secondary ship. So we easily clean up those two destroyers in the cap. They didn't play particularly well, so I'm not going to say it was all me or anything. But we did support our Fletcher buddy as best we could, along with the carrier, and we have secured the cap on this flank and killed two destroyers. Obviously very valuable. Full broadside GK, which would hopefully produce some larger shots, but you have to remember that my shell density is much lower, only firing 8 shells as compared to the 12 of the Burgone, which I've been playing recently. Same basic qualities of character of the shells, but you're just missing a quarter of them. I break a turret, 7k, just gonna continue. I'm gonna run my speed boost essentially on cooldown. This would be better if I had the speed boost module. But as long as this guy stays nice and flat, gonna just keep sending my armor piercing into him. He does go dark. Alsace hit in that alcove. He angled away, so I got only an overpin. That's quite alright. Waiting to see if that Alsace puts himself up. Doesn't look like it. Shokaku is reluctant to feed me more planes as well. Alsace dies. I'm gonna continue to push forward. This game is looking a bit stompy, especially considering um, we killed two of their destroyers. So they have little in the way of coming back into the game. Now they still do have that Shimakaze pair down below at the far cap, but I'm not particularly concerned about them. Shokaku just outside of my AA range. What's that? North Carolina comes up. So you can see here in this game that the all guns forward setup does allow you to do some pretty neat stuff in terms of charging into a cap. You don't have to worry about exposing broadside or anything to try and get your last gun to bear, your guns are just always available, which is quite nice. Now this doesn't change the fact that even with all your guns available you still only have 8 of them, but you know, it's something. Looks like the GK is reversing out and looks pretty flat from my perspective, on the minimap at least. And I have nothing else to shoot. Ooh, North Carolina comes up. Now he's not angled enough I would say. He appears to be turning out to face us as well. You can see here my shell spraying up and down, short and high. That is Jean Bart in a nutshell. Gonna get one last good salvo into him before he turns away. Probably should have loaded high explosive for this last salvo. Gonna angle just slightly to make things a little more difficult. It's me or the Iowa, and I think he's gonna choose me. Let's see if he full turns to try and get away. Oh, no, he's on my other sector now. So I'm sadly sectored to the wrong side. 7k by shooting AP into his superstructure. Alright, so he's not foolish enough to full turn. So I'm obviously exposing a bit too much broadside here. Between myself and the Iowa, our combined AA shreds that tier 8 carrier. Jean Bar is not a target you want to be sandwiching yourself close to. Looks like GK is fairly close by. No reload booster for him anymore, but I'm in a pretty good spot. He's trying to make that turn. Switching over to the Ismo. He's quite a bit more attractive in this position. Give me that Citadel. Now 15 inch guns or 380s do lack a bit of punch at range, but at these kinds of distances versus that kind of broadside, you can easily punch through to the Citadel. I'm not that lucky though. So I, even though I land all of my shells, one ricochets and the ones that land don't quite do the damage I want them to. That's alright, there's GK. He's angled, but I don't think I'm gonna pop around the corner before it becomes relevant. So I'm gonna send the shells into his superstructure. Looks like I had four pens, gonna tick a fire, so nose back in. Remember my turrets are vulnerable. So if he shoots my turrets, he can actually disable me. Don't want to chase him too heavily, I would say. But at the same time, I can't really disengage from him at a distance to where his secondaries aren't firing at me. Again, shells into the superstructure because he's angled. Could honestly switch to HE here, but I kind of think that I might have a decent shot at the North Carolina. And my reload booster is coming up, so we'll just switch during that period if these shells aren't that good. I'm gonna go AP into AP just to test. So pop, fire. And I do score a citadel, as you can see. Not quite angled enough against me. 
my shells have a lot of penetration. So I'm going to stick with AP because they got that Citadel. That tells me the angle of the NKL isn't quite good enough to bounce my shells. Doesn't appear to have adjusted, but he's a bit farther now, so shoot a bit further. And only now do we switch to high explosive. Only 1,100 on that Sabo there, disappointingly. You can see my secondaries with their pretty poor angles, only shooting basically one secondary. Uh, with HE loaded now, I'm going to switch my bias over to the GK. Better to focus down one target, and he is a bit lower. And he has a lot more juicy superstructure for me to target with that high explosive. Five HE shells into the superstructure, rewards me with 8k and a fire. He damage controls. By the time I reload, his damage control will tick out. Still 10 seconds. Seven, six, five. So I'm chasing now with my speed boost. Aim a bit high. He looks to be turning. The torpedoes catch that North Carolina, and I finish yet another game with no kill. But kills are not as important as game victories. And this time we do 140,000 damage. We don't die. 81 shell hits. Bunch of overpens and ricochets, but that does tend to happen with the high velocity but low caliber rifles. 23 plane kills, as I mentioned. This modernized 1955 AA suite is quite impressive when you come up against tier 8s versus tier 10 carriers. Don't be quite so full of yourself, they'll easily strike you. Even tier 8 carriers can strike you if they do it properly with the right kinds of squadrons and the right circumstances, but it's not to say that your AA is mediocre. It's just that AA is in a relatively weak spot throughout the game. So even quote unquote strong AA ships will take damage. Seven caps, six fires. As I mentioned, the secondaries are pretty good at fire starting and are good against light targets, but they limited firing arcs of the secondaries on the rear side of the ship, mean that they don't go off very often, so you'll often get fires from them though if they do go off. Or in this case, if you have to switch to high explosive versus uh, more heavily armored targets, battleships that are angling against you, then you do tend to have okay fire chance, even though the shell alpha is pretty middling. But you do reach for that HE from time to time because of the non overmatching caliber. One hit to the Citadel, high penetration. French guns can do this quite easily, we just didn't have too many opportunities to demonstrate it, and sometimes that French dispersion uh, did cause us to get unlucky, as with that broadside salvo into the Ismo at 13 kilometers. Four defender ribbons, 69 target hits. Nothing too shabby. Team score wise, this time we do manage to acquit ourselves with a top of the scoreboard 21,000 base experience or 2100, sorry, not 2100, not too impressive. Mostly battleship damage, but if you do recall, we had those HE salvos into those destroyers at the beginning of the match, and this time, uh, even though we did get the majority of our damage from AP damage onto battleships, we do have a substantial 38,000 high explosive damage. Credit-wise, this is a tier 9 premium, so tier 9 premiums, if you're a free-to-play player, are the easiest way to earn credits. They basically never will cause you to lose credits, and you can see here, even without a premium account, with no flags and just the base camo that the ship comes with, you earn a nice solid 220,000. Anyhow, that was my quick Jean Bar review. Probably a long time coming since this ship has been in the game for a year now. I forgot to mention she is a bit squishy, I did mention the armor, but in addition to her armor, her HP is very low, only 69,000. Uh, it's basically this, exactly the same as the Richelieu, and this is exceptionally squishy. Uh, for a normal-ish tier 9, for example, uh, we can look at the Iowa. I don't own an Iowa, so we're going to use the Missouri, which has more or less the same health. But just to compare, the Missouri at tier 9 has 78,000, so almost 10,000 more. Uh, and then you also have to contend with monsters like Musashi, which has a truly ridiculous 97,000 health. Now, Musashi is definitely one of the standouts, but even the tech tree ship Frederick de Grossa, Fred, Frederick de Great, whatever, the tier 9 German tech tree, uh, has comparable, comparable health around 92,000, I want to say, just off the top of my head. Uh, and then there's also newcomers such as the Sovetsky Soyuz which has 88,000, so the Jean Bart is obviously vastly outmatched in the HP department. 
And as I mentioned, uniform 32mm plate means you take pen damage all over. No special armor plates here. And note your turrets, I mentioned them a couple times, they are pr pretty vulnerable, particularly the number 2 turret here. Or the B turret if you prefer. The front glasses is 430, but the side plates are only 300, and if someone happens to catch you in the back of the turrets if you're turned to face the other way with your guns, they're only 270 millimeters. And since this raised gun is exposed, a lot of heavy BBAP, especially Soviet battleship guns, or Stalingrad shells, or Yamato shells, can and will break these turrets. So you will often go matches where your turrets are frequently disabled for most of the match, or even entirely destroyed. So do be very careful. So as a result of that turret durability, you do want to take main battery or main armaments modification 1 in slot 1. Then in slot 2, if you have a speed boost, put slot your speed boost into here. If not, tankiness, aiming systems for improved main battery dispersion, main battery is your bread and butter, tankiness again, concealment, and reload. Very plain Jane, and this, for captain wise, I used the same captain build as on my Burgone. So very standard, again, priority target, adrenaline rush superintendent, fire prevention into concealment expert, back into expert marksman, and then basics of survivability. And um, as you saw, you switched between ammo quite a bit, so this is one of the ships in particular even more so than on the Burgone and the Repub, which I also use as captain for, where you want to ammo switch. So taking Expert Loader plus Jack of All Trades instead of basics of survivability is definitely an option. Anyhow, that was my Jean Bar review. She's a great tier 9, one of the community favorites and certainly deserving of her reputation as a fantastic tier 9 premium battleship. Uh, even if you're not a battleship player, she is cruisery in some aspects, so I would give her a solid recommend in my books. And that'll be all for now. Cheers!